So now that we calibrated the head, made sure the electronics work great, right, the electronics understand where is the air and where is the oxygen, uh, at what millivolt, we now will assemble the unit or continue with the assembly of the unit. I'm going to take the head off. I'm going to use some oxygen compatible lubricant and I'm going to grease the sealing surface. You can grease the o-rings as well, but my o-rings are well lubricated, they're clean as well. So I'm just going to put in a little bit of lubricant on the sealing surface of the tube and a little bit of into the sealing surface of the uh, CO2 scrubber. Right, now we're ready to put the head in. It is on, it's calibrated, it's good. One more time, I'm checking if the O-rings are sitting in. Uh, the very last thing, you want to make sure there's no hair crossing the O-rings. There's not really a lot of danger with me putting a lot of hair on the O-rings, but you may have more hair than me, so be aware. Right, so I'm going to look against the light, make sure there's no hair over the O-rings. And that's good. All right, setting it on straight down, make sure there's no cable coming out here. The cable comes out on the side and you push the head down, it's going to pinch the cables. All right? So in the middle of it, give it a good push down. One, two, I felt both O-rings going in. Feel around that the O-rings did not come out. If they come out, then I'm going to seal. And now we just clamp it down. The clamps are not going to do anything <coughs> to the ceiling of the unit. They're just going to uh, hold the head in place. So we're not going to lose the head while diving. All right. Okay, for the next step, uh, we're going to put the loop onto the unit, assemble the hoses in the front. If I leave the unit the way it is, you won't see anything. So let me move it around a little bit for you so you can see something. Take care of your handsets. Don't let them dangle, don't let them fall down. They're pretty rugged though, but you don't want to give it a, you don't really want to try it. Okay, so you now you should see it a little better. Still looks kind of confusing up here in front, but uh, we have the head. Out of the head comes two handsets and the HUD. The HUD is the hands up display. You can see it's blinking red because the PO2 is less than 1.0. Then we put that on this side. We have the handset that goes on the right hand side. We put it on the right. The handset that goes on the left, we put it on the left. Well, maybe put it in the back here and organize the hoses a little bit. So we have, on the right hand side, we have the oxygen tank. With the oxygen tank on the right hand side, we have all the O2 on the right hand side, including the manual O2 injector and the connecting part, as well as the uh, connector that goes into the solenoid feed. In newer, in newer Megalodon rebreathers, that is not a quick disconnect anymore, but something you have to screw on. In either way, it has to be connected. Because if you don't connect it, it will not feed oxygen into your rebreather on your solenoid. Okay? So then we attach the hoses to the counter lungs. And that's a personal way, a personal preference, the way you do it. When the counter lungs come, they have these... Uh, hose holders on the left and right, I just cut off most of them because it's my unit and I prefer to have the hoses routed on the inside. I think it's more streamlined that way if you go in the overhead environment such as cave diving or wreck diving. Okay, so I have the feet down here and the pressure gauge of the oxygen goes down here. And I'm going to do the same thing on this side. We, I have three hoses over here. I'm going to clamp them down all at once on the top. My inflator goes on the outside. Then here I have my ADV, my uh, uh, automatic diluent valve. I'm using a very old style ADV, which is not using the mushroom activator you may know from your unit. Uh, this unit here does not need a mechanical activation. It just needs a slight in the vacuum or under pressure inside the unit. I prefer that unit over the mushroom. Inside, make sure lubri it's lubricated, make sure the O-rings are good, double O-rings on all the unit, I love it. Putting it together, it's being tested later, and put the pressure gauge for the diluent tank on the left hand side as well, and make sure it 
it's in a place where you can find it at all times. So it's way more clean now. Okay. So the next step will be to attach the loop to the unit. Okay. What I'm going to do again here is I'm going to use some oxygen compatible lubricant. Just very little. You know, I don't want to see the white. It's white in color. If I put so much in there that it's all white in there, that's way too much lubricant. Just needs to look a little bit of wet. Okay. Then we take the loop. And we have already tested the mushroom valves inside the mouthpiece. Remember that? It's a very important step. So we put the loop in front of the rebreather and attach it to the head first. One thread is left, the other one is right, so you cannot by accident put it the wrong way. That was something they had to do for the CE certification. The Megalodon is CE certified. And as well, the slightly modified uh, Megalodon is now the Mark 28 the US Navy rebreather. It's a cool thing. Now that I have attached the loop to the head, the next thing is to attach it to the counter lungs. Make sure the double O-rings are in place, they're clean, they're lubricated, there's no hair over it. Straight on, hand tied, no tools needed. Check the O rings, make sure clean, no hair inside. That's the counter thread, the left thread, to ensure we cannot put the unit together the wrong way. It's a fine thread, so you may have to thread it for a little moment here. Good, that's good. My BOV feed that is later on being connected to my bailout tank. I'm just going to run underneath the counter lung. When I'm at it, I'm going to put the HUD on. The HUD is going to sit right here in front of my mask where I can see the PO2 inside the loop, wrapping it around the corrugated hose of the loop to take some slack out. So now our rebreather is complete. I just want to do a couple of tests before I can go diving with it.